that being said, I want to briefly move over to boxing because there was big news, big, big, big news in boxing this week. Terrence Bud Crawford getting stripped of his IBF title and the title being presented to Jerron Boots Ennis, our uh, young Philly native. Uh, that's just crazy. That's crazy to me. And uh, let's be honest. Can we really say that we didn't see this coming? All right, you had Terrence Crawford just became undisputed champion. He had he had the big win over Earl Spence back in July. Got all four belts: WBA, WBC, WBO, IBF, and he there was an an immediate rematch clause that either guy could enact after the fight. And Earl Spence decided to enact that clause within the specified uh, time window. And there's been some some things holding up the fight. And here's the thing, the IVF, they don't they allow you to fight mandatories for the other sanctioning bodies, but they don't allow you to hold the belt if you're doing rematches and whatnot. That does not fall under their um they don't give you a pass for that. So that's why they stripped him of the title because Jerron Boots Ennis had a fight against uh Karen Man, I can't pronounce his last name. I think he might be... He's definitely an Eastern Bloc fighter. He had the mandatory uh, defense against um, him in January to become the uh, IBF mandatory. And then he just defended his belt against Roy Monvilla in July, same month as the uh, Spence Crawford fight. So he's the mandatory, all right? So if the rematch is not going to be happening, you don't know what's going on with Spence or whatnot, guess what? The IBF's like, yo, either fight Jerron Boots Ennis or we taking the title and we're giving it to him because he's the mandatory, and that's what they did. So I'm going to end off the video with my thoughts on these, these rematch clauses and why I think they are bad for boxing. But that's why he lost his title. So now you have... It's up in the air by who who Boots Ennis is going to have to fight now. Who's the mandatory now that he fights as the IBF champion, right? Does he get a shot against Terrence Crawford? Is Crawford moving up and just staying fighting Spence? Who does who does Boots Ennis fight next, right? So that's the big news, right? And and there's going to be some people that agree with it. It's going to be some people that disagree with it. I, I'm in the camp that agrees with it. Look. You beat Spence, you went against the top dog for the last belts, kudos, you became undisputed champion at 147, the first um, two-division undisputed champion, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but whether he's the first or not, it's still incredibly impressive, that feat that he accomplished. But now that you have all the belts, you got to defend them now, man. The IBF, and I love what the IBF did because we had... We've seen the belts be held hostage by boxers before. Floyd Mayweather, Manny Pacquiao, Canelo Alvarez, Tyson Fury. The list goes on, right? We saw Tyson Fury get stripped eventually when he was going through his mental health issues, but it shouldn't have taken that long, right? So you, you don't want people holding the belts hostage, especially since there's multiple belts. If there's one belt... Then you probably get a guy give a guy a little more leeway, but you have to then look at the flip side of what where he really justified in um, taking the belt away from Terrence Crawford in that short amount of time. That that wasn't we just had the fight in July, and now it's November, and boom, title gone. We've seen sanctioning bodies, including the IBF, give other fighters much more leeway and keeping the belts when they've been inactive, whether that be from off out of the ring problems or them just dipping and ducking and dodging their mandatories. So typically you you have to fight your mandatory and once you fight your mandatory, then the sanctioned bodies give you a chance to do a voluntary voluntary defense of your choosing before you then have to fight a mandatory in your next fight. But they didn't do that with Earl Spence. Like we think back to Earl Spence, he had the car crash, where he had to take time off from fighting. I think that was right after the Sean Porter fight. He he won a very very highly contested great fight against Sean Porter, and then I think that night he hopped into the whip 
and was driving reckless and got into the, the accident. Okay, so he got some time off, but he was allowed to retain the IBF title. Fast forward, he had the detached retina in preparation for the Manny Pacquiao fight when he was able to solidify the purse for that fight. He got the detached retina. So he had to take time off from due to that as well. He still was allowed to hold the belts. Now, look, you don't want to see somebody go through that. But that being said, it's not the sanctioning body's fault. They can't anticipate you having a freakish injury like that. And the world, the show got to keep going. The show must go on. Sorry you're going through that. But in the meantime, you got to get that, that strap up, man. Like, you can't fight, even though it's not your fault, per se. You still can't fight. You got to give the belt up to somebody else and allow them to fight for it, obtain it, and defend it while you get your health together. That's what it should have been. And the IBF president came out, and he admitted as much, right? Because you can't, you can't be inconsistent. You can't be inconsistent with doing that, all right? So let me know what you guys think about that. Daryl Peoples came out and said we probably should have ordered an interim earlier given the extent of Spence's injuries, right? And this is with reference to why the IBF didn't crown an interim champion until January, this January, when Spence was coming off of a two-year-long layoff, right? He was coming off, uh, well, two-year-long plus layoffs, right? He was coming off, what, a 15-month layoff? It was quite a significant layoff coming into this Crawford fight, which I mentioned in my prediction video. So you have to wonder, you had two year-long-plus layoffs. Why weren't you ordered to give up the belt? Or why wasn't an interim champion um, crowned during that time? Right? They said, we tr there are people's, I'd be a president, told ESPN this Friday, we typically try to stay away from interims but can see that it should have been done earlier. We underestimated his recovery time, and I have to own that. Nothing nefarious. All right, but, you know, at least they, at the very least, they admitted their screw-up, but it's a screw-up nonetheless. Are they going to keep it consistent moving forward? I don't know. You let me know in the comments. And then lastly, I told you I would circle back to this. I want to talk about how this is going to affect other fighters and other big mega fights coming up. Um, on the horizon, these rematch clauses. And the one that I'm looking at, and look, I didn't cover the Nganu Fury fight because although I was intrigued because I think Nganu was a very, very capable boxer and he proved it in their fight, it's still not, he ain't a ranked fighter. All right. So my comments on that fight are that I was highly impressed by what he did. I thought that he did enough to win the fight seven to five. Um, I, I was okay with a 6-6 six six draw, but I thought he did enough to win by one point. Um, and I hope to see him box more in the future. That being said, at least we came out of that fight with the rematch, with the uh, matchup being set in stone for Usyk and Fury um, fighting for all the marbles, all four belts. All right. Now, once that fight is done, guess what is in the contract? Rematch clause, all right? Same as what we saw with Spence and Crawford. If one side or the other loses, they can enact that rematch clause. And guess what? The IBF, again, they're not going to go by their program. You know what they how they're going to roll. If if Tyson Fury, let's say, let's say Tyson Fury wins this fight and Usyk triggers the automatic rematch clause, now... Tyson Fury can be stripped of his IBF belt, and vice versa. If Usyk wins and decides, and Fury wants to rematch, Usyk can be stripped of that IBF belt because it's an automatic clause. Because the interim champion is uh, what's his name? Uh, somebody that I'm just not even familiar with. I don't, I'm not even familiar with his name. Um, let's see. Can't pronounce it. We we'll just call him Philippe. Um, Philippe Hergovich. That is the mandatory defense with no intervening belts. And the organization will not grant any exceptions. So if they don't fight him, whoever is the winner of that fight, well, guess what? One of them is going to lose the IVF belt the same way as Crawford just did. So you guys let me know what you think. Should there be mandatory rematch clauses? Should there be? 
And if you're going to have a mandatory rematch clause and you're going to put that into the contract, you have... Can you not work out something with the sanctioning body? Or at the very least, if you're going to become undisputed, there should not be a rematch clause, I don't think, if there's if you're fighting for undisputed. If you're fighting for to unify, then I can see how it makes sense, okay? You fight to unify, maybe um, the belt gets stripped and, and goes to... I, I don't know. Let, let me know what you guys think. But if, if you're having a, a fight to unify all four belts, there should not be an immediate mandatory rematch clause. I think the, re the rematch clause, if you're going to have one, should be optional. So if you lose, you enact a rematch clause, and then I decide if I want to go ahead and do that. And then my reasoning, if I didn't want to rematch you, would be, hey, I want to defend my mandatory. If you allow me to defend my mandatory, then I'd be open to then giving you your shot to run it back. But let me defend my mandatory so I can keep the belts that I just freaking won in our first matchup. That's the way I see it. Let me know what you guys think. Um, you know, enjoy the NFL slate um, to this week. Eagles fans, sit back and rejoice in another win from last week over our hated rivals. Or let me not use hated, highly disliked rivals, the Dallas Cowgirls. And Raiders, let's, let's go out and look. The Jets, I always want to see them do well, but just not this week against my team. And then let me know what you guys think about all the news in boxing, the um, the rematch clause situation, the IBF belt being stripped from um, Terrence Crawford and, and, and whatnot. And then I'll be dropping a video as well talking about the first interactions between Boo Boo Andrade and Benavidez. David Benavidez, man. Boo Boo on drop. Let's talk about it. All right. Enjoy your Sundays, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.